This would have been the first thing we learned on day one, the evolution of a star. Uh, that was the one with the monkey and the cat, and they were sitting on a motorcycle because we had that evolutionary and catastrophic hypothesis of the solar nebula cycle. And they were eating the nab crackers, it was the nebula hypothesis, and the guy's name was Pierre Simon de Laplace. The crackers were falling onto the lap lace, we called it. And he was on the motorcycle. But the real thing starts with the motorcycle when he did the burnout. The, the, the cloud coming off the back would have formed this nebula cloud. And then in the center of that nebula cloud, if you remember, we, it started to flatten uh, due to gravity. So we had a, a pizza uh, with gravy on top of it. And in the center of it was a pro toe. We had Patrick's uh, toe in the middle of it, painted up with a professional Dallas Cowboy emblem. And so the protostar would be, after this thing collapses down, uh, the protostar heats up due to friction. All right, so we had our planetary nebula, I'm sorry, not the planetary nebula, we had our solar nebula contracts and spins. Don't get those two confused, I almost messed up there. The solar nebula, where we're forming the star, contracts and spins. And then in the center of it, we have our proto uh, being formed. That proto star, when it heats up enough, then nuclear fusion can begin. Uh, and this is what we call a main sequence star. This is where a star is going to spend most of its life. It's where our star is right now, about 5 billion years into its life. This would be uh, Patrick rubbing sticks together due to friction, and nuclear fusion begins. That's where we, uh, the true star begins and nuclear fusion begins. And then we call it a main sequence star after that nuclear fusion begins. It, this is a proto star. It's like a prototype. The main sequence star is where it's a true star. So here we have our nuclear fusion begins, and it's a main sequence star from, from then on. At the end of its life, uh, we had the mnemonic where it, 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 the nuclear bomb exploded, and then as it went off towards the, uh, towards the hallway direction, it hit a giant balloon that had helium in it that belonged to Clifford the Big Red Dog. That would be the Red Giant phase or the Red Super, well we'll get to that with the Superman, but the Red Giant phase. And this is where it starts to fuse helium. That's why you had the helium balloon. A main sequence star is fusing hydrogen into helium, but then when it runs out of hydrogen, it begins to fuse helium and then it glows a little hotter and it forms this Red Giant. Uh, the Clifford the Big Red Dog, when he became upset, he burped into a potted plant with a little garden gnome or a white dwarf in the middle of it. This red giant, basically, it will expand outward and its outer skin will gently float away. And in the center of that, this is called a planetary nebula, it burps away its outer skin to form a planetary nebula. And in the center of it was a little white dwarf. Here's your white dwarf, but you can see it right there in the middle of it. This is, has nothing to do with planets. The only reason it's called that is because when we first started discovering the planetary nebula, they look a lot like Uranus and Neptune, uh, two planets that we had just recently discovered as well. And on the large or the massive star scale, it's very similar, but that would be after we had Cliff, I mean, after we had uh, Patrick and the explosion, it went off and hit Superman's balloon. And Superman wears the colors red and blue, so we have red and blue supergiants. And two things can happen. So we had Superman in his right arm was carrying a, a Chevy Nova with Superman stickers all of it. It was a supernova. And in the middle of that supernova was Jimmy Neutron. And so it's a neutron star. And then the other thing we had, we had Superman also carrying a shovel where they can form black holes. Basically, it depends on the size. If they're large stars, they're going to go this route. And generally, most of them will supernova and have neutron stars. But if they're really large, what happens is when this thing explodes, it bounces off that core of the star, that iron core. And during the bounce, it takes all the electrons and protons and smashes them together to form a very dense neutron mass. And so that's why it leaves a neutron star. But really large stars, they, they'll bounce off and try to explode, but it's just too much mass there and gravity wins and it collapses down into a singularity, into a black hole. But the ones we're worried about for this one up here is this, this top sequence up here where we go from uh, the, the solar nebula condenses, protostar heats up, and then it ignites nuclear fusion, where it becomes a main sequence star, and then we're a red giant, 
and then a planetary nebula, and then at the end is a little white dwarf. And then after this white dwarf, after it cools down, it would become a black dwarf where it stops giving off visible light.